Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Nat and welcome back to another episode of Fantastic Nature Adventures. Now this is going to be an episode that's pretty easy to make. Basically, I am in a massive milkweed field right now. There's grass, uh, milkweed, some shrubbery, some other plants all around me and there's a ton of insect life that can be found in this field. Um, there's a lot of pollinators that pollinate the milkweed flowers. There's a lot of animals that feed on the milkweed leaves. There's just a ton of different insects out here. So I'm just gonna try to find some of the most interesting um, insects that do live in this area and hopefully I can educate you guys on some of the insects that live in Maine. So let's do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to go right into this field and look and see how many bugs I can find. I'm using my GoPro because it's just easier to get around with the GoPro. So we're going to go in here, see what kind of insects we can find, and look right there. We have a grasshopper. Oops. Pretty cool. Alright, I'm going to catch this grasshopper because I really love grasshoppers. They're one of my favorite types of insects, so I'm going to catch this guy. Gentle with him. Shoot, I should move. So. Man. Okay, guys, I have a pretty good sized grasshopper here. Actually, he's not that big, but he's a green, little green grasshopper. I am going to use. Here, actually, go. Oh, he's jumped. There he is. I really don't want to handle him too much because grasshoppers, I mean, they just jump right out of your hand. As soon as you open your hand up, they're going to jump out. So grasshoppers are really cool, and the thing that, that, that I wanted to show you guys about this grasshopper, let me get out of the sun here, is look at my hands. Look at this kind of like brown stuff that's on my hands. This is a really unique um, defense mechanism that only grasshoppers and their relatives use, and it's called tobacco juice. That's a really weird term, I know, but this kind of um, fluid that they emit is called tobacco juice, and they basically what they do is they vomit up um, the excess plant material that they're not using. So a lot of the fluids um, that are maybe toxic um, in the plant that the grasshoppers just do not want to you know, try to digest, they will throw that back up onto their predator and it tastes really, really bad. Um, I'm not going to try to taste any because I just don't want to. But if you were a snake and you were trying to eat a grasshopper and you got a taste of that tobacco juice, you would spit the grasshopper out right away. I, I assure you, it does not taste very good. It's very bitter um, and it basically tastes like you know excess plant fluids, if you can even imagine what that would taste like. But it's not a good taste. So that's one of the things I find really interesting about grasshoppers. And I'm going to use my field guide here to see what kind of grasshopper that is. There are so many different kinds of insects here that I honestly, there's probably like two different, two or three different kinds of grasshoppers that are just simply green. Um, and then there's probably like another, like a dozen other species. So I'm gonna use my field guide to really just determine what kind of uh, animals I catch out. Okay guys, I wanna say that it's this type of grasshopper, the northern green striped grasshopper, um, just cause it's all green. And that one we caught was all green. But like I said, you've got this one's all green. You've got this one that's brown and green. You've got this one that's like kind of green, but also like blackish brown and red. Like I said, with entomology, identifying um, insects can be much more complicated than it can be for you know reptiles, um, you know birds, mammals even. Um, entomology, you know, the diversity of invertebrates and insects, it's crazy. So I'm using this field guide. I use field guides a lot actually, but. This is kind of like one of the first times I've actually featured field guide, a field guide in my uh, video. But basically, I'm going to use this field guide to see what other animals I can find. Because basically, I'm very interested in insects, but a lot of the time I am just, you know, not exactly certain on what species I have caught. So that's why I'm going to use this field guide to determine exactly what I've caught. Check this out. We've got a grasshopper that's kind of yellow and brown. Really quick, I'm going to show you guys this guy before he jumps away. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh shoot. He was on me for like a split second. He jumped onto my shirt. 
but let me try to see what kind of species that is. Really quick, probably this. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying probably this, or maybe could be this. That's what I'm saying. Like honestly, when it comes to identifying insects, it is hard. It's not easy. It's not easy work. Actually, I think it might be this. This is like a yellowish brown, dude. That's probably what it is. Yellowish brown. I think that's what it is. Anyway, guys, grasshoppers. A lot of insects are really hard to identify. Oh, look at this wasp. I don't want to get too close. That just looks like a paper wasp to me. That's a wasp. Paper, wa paper wasps are pretty painful. Uh, much more painful than a yellow jacket, I'll tell you that much, but they're not horrible, horrible. It's getting a little windy out here, so some of the insects are kind of hiding in the undergrowth now, because as you can see, the milkweed is kind of blowing in the wind a little bit. But I'm still looking for more animals. Another insect that I was seeing a lot of was these sort of brown moths. Originally, I thought they were butterflies, but upon looking in my field guide, I'm pretty sure that there's some type of brown diurnal moth. Anyway, they didn't really do much. They were just all over the place and they were everywhere. And they were pollinating a little bit, I guess. Although I did see those moths, I also did see some butterflies. I think that these butterflies I saw here are some kind of fritillary, either the great spangled fritillary butterfly or the Atlantis fritillary butterfly. I really, I, I can't tell the difference. They look pretty much identical, at least to me. Um, and yeah, they were just flying around, pollinating the milkweed, they were just chilling, doing their thing, pollinating, and they were really cool and really beautiful to see. Alright guys, now this, what I'm about to show you is the number one critter I'm trying to find out here. Check this guy out. Gotta be gentle. And go, got him. This, right here, is called the Swamp milkweed leaf beetle bit of a mouthful that one swamp milkweed leaf beetle almost looks like a ladybug on steroids that's kind of how i think of this beetle because it is just pretty large i guess for some of the other beetles not that it's large it just looks kind of bulky so anyway this is one of my favorite beetles it just looks really cool it looks really beautiful and they live uh they live on these milkweed plants uh, they're not common common but they're relatively seen often enough so i just want to show you guys this cool dude okay there it is see if i get him oh he tried to fly away but i got him check this out So super cool. Ah, uh, well, he just flew away. Super cool species of beetle. One of my personal favorites, the red milkweed beetle, and they pretty much only live on milkweed. They eat milkweed. They, you know, just breed on the milkweed. They lay their eggs on the milkweed. They literally do everything on milkweed. So without milkweed, they cannot survive. It's really amazing how because insects have lived for so many millions of years on Earth, um, there's species that are specifically adapted to just one type of plant. Look at this. This is a crazy parasitic wasp. Either a human wasp or gall wasp. All right, so I was totally correct. That species was certainly some type of a human wasp. Now, when most people think of wasps, they really only think of yellow jackets and hornets and the more like common uh, stinging wasps that really are you know more common for us to see because they enjoy being around human habitation however there are a ton of other types of wasps that are more parasitic and are more um, solitary animals and one of those uh, types of wasps obviously this is not one species this is a huge family of different insects is the human wasps now human wasps what they will do is they will actually lay their eggs inside of a insect be it um, a butterfly a you know moth a fly they will literally insert their egg um, inside of an insect now most people don't actually know this but stingers 
are actually just modified ovipositors. And an ovipositor is just a way for a female insect to lay their eggs. So a stinger is just a modified version of that. And these wasps, they use their very long ovipositors to literally insert their uh, eggs into a certain animal. I think they're always insects that they insert it into, but it's still really crazy, really bizarre stuff. Um, I find it personally very fascinating. And there's so many different kinds of insects that people just are not aware of. And I just love insects because there's just such a rich diversity of different, you know, life cycles and different lifestyles and different ways that they, you know, go about um, their life. And this is really fascinating stuff. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching this insect video. I know I didn't find like a crazy plethora of different insects, but I hopefully was able to find a good amount of different insects, a good amount of different types of insects, you know, some beetles, some butterflies, some wasps, all that stuff. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I thought it was pretty fun, it was pretty easy to just walk around here, look at the insects, film them, give it a little bit of information. It's really not that hard to do. You guys can even do this if you have a backyard, just look around. If you have a field, it doesn't have to be a milkweed field, any field, and you can see what kind of insects you can find. Anyway guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, then definitely give it a like, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. I'm Matt Ermson. Thank you guys so much for watching Fantastic Nature Adventures. I'm out.